So I work on biological physics, um, which is the study of the physical processes of life. Um, my particular research area is in protein folding, which studies how chains of amino acids fold up into some three-dimensional conformation that makes um, a protein a structure that does something in the cell. And how that actually happens is a really hard problem because you have to understand all of the interactions of the chain with itself and with water. It happens all the time in every one of your cells, so understanding how that happens is um, very important uh, just from understanding life. But the other reason that it's important is when pr protein folding goes wrong because that causes disease. So there are some diseases such as cystic fibrosis where um, one mutation in one amino acid keeps the protein from folding and so then the protein is not expressed and you get sick. Um, a more common folding problem is in aggregation-based diseases. So if a protein doesn't fold to the correct shape, it's more likely to have a sticky patch that can meet up with another protein and stick together, and then another one, and another one, and that's called an aggregate. And that's bad because the protein doesn't do what it's supposed to do, and it also seems to be toxic to cells and kills them. And then you get diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, type 2 diabetes, mad cow disease, um, Huntington's disease, the list goes on and on. Um, and most of these diseases happen later in life, so as the population gets older and older, more and more people are getting these diseases. And so if we can figure out how to prevent that from happening by understanding protein folding, then we can do a lot to improve human health. So the aggregation question is really interesting to me. Um, I'm particularly interested in how aggregation starts at the very, very beginning. So a lot of people study the aggregation process of how these proteins come together, but I'm actually interested in what is it about a particular protein that makes it more likely to aggregate than most of the proteins in your body. So most of the proteins in your body manage to avoid aggregation, but say the Alzheimer's peptide seems to be very likely to aggregate. So what is it physically about that that makes it more likely to aggregate? And can we find some kind of small molecule that you could call a drug that we could then put in your brain and prevent aggregation from happening in the first place. Um, I love working with graduate students and finding out what they have figured out and then deciding, you know, okay, we have this data, what does it mean? And what, are we, what can we do with it? Um, I also really love getting into the lab and making things work. I still love to just play around with the lasers and make things happen. Mm -hmm.